Welcome guys, this is Ola from Stop Me Old Channel, back with another Life is Strange video. Or should I actually say Life is Strange slash The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit slash Life is Strange 2, I wanna say? Basically we've heard some details about Life is Strange 2 and the Captain Spirit links. So I wanna discuss that today. Also, I wanna discuss the meaning behind the song of Death with Dignity by Sophie and Stevens that was playing in the trailer because we found out that it's no accidental song like it's quite important the lyrics are quite important so I will discuss that today as well as what I think might happen in Life is Strange 2 sort of I think we might get to see Max possibly but I'll get to that first of all remember to check out the links in the description for social media subscribe for more Life is Strange videos news and some gaming videos and let's plays as well. Uh, basically, right now I'm in the middle of a Detroit Become Human let's play. First of all, the song that's playing in the trailer, it's called Death with Dignity by Sophie Stevens. The developers revealed that that song is actually very important, that it sort of links to Chris's life, so Captain Spirit's life, the main protagonist of the awesome adventures of Captain Spirit. So I thought, I have to look into the meaning of that song so perhaps thanks to that we will know the story of the awesome adventures of captain spirit and i think i might have an idea if you have a look at this surfing steven's song plays critical role in a new life is strange video game the awesome adventures of captain spirit director says surfing's personal story parallels the main characters in an interview with Eurogamer, Captain Spirit co-director Raoul Barbet explained that the lyrics of Death with Dignity align with the theme of the game and that Sophie and Steven's personal story parallels Chris's story. In addition to playing at the opening of the game, the song will re-emerge at various moments with some lyrics reflecting the story arc depending on players' actions. So let's actually check out an analysis of that song. So maybe we'll be able to figure out what the story will be actually about. As a child, Serfian lived with his mother and stepfather for three summers in Oregon. Other than that, he barely saw his mother who struggled with addiction and mental illness until her death. Stevens explained that her death struck him much more than he expected and more or less serves as an inspiration for this album. The title of the song refers to the Death with Dignity Act, which was passed in Oregon in 1994 and allows for terminally ill patients to receive physician-aided death. We can only assume that this is the way that his mother left the word. With the title of the first track, Stevens has shown us the main subject of the work, the death of his mother. Stevens has never been so direct when talking about his life through his music. Up until now, he has always mixed his own life history with fantastical images and stories of the ages, and never directly addressed his feelings. Sophie Stevens tells his mother that he forgives her and longs to be near her. After living his life with little interaction with her, this is an outstanding development, albeit a depressing one. Only after her death has Serfian acknowledged and voiced his love and desire to be with his mother. The repeated lines of every road leads to an end and you'll never see us again remind us of the finality of death and how it haunts him like an apparition. So yeah, I gotta say, it looks like uh, another fun game from Don't Not. <laughs> Yeah, they're trying to depress us pretty much. I think what's going to happen, what we're going to see, we're going to see Chris alone without his mother, with his father that's a bit of an alcoholic. He's not too bad though, in my opinion. I think he's trying, I think he's just really, really sad. Not necessarily a bad person. Chris's mother is probably either mentally ill or really, really sick, like terminally sick. She might be using the Death of Dignity Act, so maybe she actually died because she wanted to. Now that's a lot to handle for a kid. So naturally he's running away from reality into this Captain Spirit world. This is what's going to happen. We might actually deal with Chris on the day of his mother's death. I don't know, I'm just guessing. The mother has to appear somehow in the game. We have to find out. Like. We will explore in that game, but it has to end at some point. Like, it's not like we're going to explore it all and it will be like the end of the game. Something has to happen. You know, they, they love to depress us. They love to 
depresses and sort of torture us so it has to be something sad it has to be something that will make us cry and since it's based on surfing steven's life i think the mother will die or has already died that's pretty much what i think now the possible relation between both games from the interviews with michel koch we actually found out that the game takes place in the same universe as life is strange he actually said that the place where they're living is very close to Arcadia Bay. He actually said it's not too far, but it's still in Oregon, obviously, the Death of Dignity Act was Oregon placed. Also, if you listen carefully to Michelle Koch's interview, I think Chris will not be a protagonist of Life is Strange 2. He mentioned that they were building up a whole Life is Strange universe, Life is Strange 2 story arc, and then Chris sort of appeared there and then decided that he's good enough to become a protagonist of his own in that little free game, the Captain Spirit one. So I don't think that he will be the main protagonist or else he wouldn't say that. You can listen to that interview yourselves, uh, it's quite informative. And we really wanted for the next games to, to look at other themes, other type of characters, so we could also extend um, the yeah, the, 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 social, the social themes we are talking about, to not just keep everything in high school. Um, and at a point, um, when we were working on the bigger story of Life is Strange 2, we, we had this character that... You will see what happened in Life is Strange 2, but we had this character that we thought would be also a great character for a smaller, uh, short, self-contained story. And I think that's what's great with Life is Strange, is that it's still the same universe. The, the game takes place in Oregon, not too far away from Arcadia Bay, so people will find links. But it's still a big universe for an anthology where we can really create new characters, new set of stories, and hopefully keep the same vibe, the same pacing, the same way to, to, to tell stories, and also to show to, to the players those more social issues, and maybe have players also reflect about some, yeah, some issues of the real world. So they're basically building a whole universe uh, within Oregon, within Life is Strange world. That's pretty neat. As I said before, I'm very happy about that. It means that we'll get more games. Anytime you see a secondary character, they might actually become a protagonist of the next game. So fingers crossed for all the secondary characters that we actually met along the way. Now the important part. In this other interview, Michel Koch said that our Life is Strange choice will matter and that they will not canonize either ending, but it will be there. So possibly when we start a game, we'll get to pick. Did you save Chloe or did you sacrifice her? Now, this is actually something that I said in so many videos that, that's, that it can be done. You can also have that choice transported into the new game, like Mass Effect Trilogy. You just import the save file and the game remembers your choices and it's valid. Now, I don't know, the guy that was holding this interview, he was a bit annoying for some reason, but he asked him if this will be a major part. Like, he's the one that said that it's not going to be a major part. Michel Koch, he doesn't want to say anything, really. He does want to say some stuff, but he's not sharing a lot. Just have a look. But for Life is Strange True, I don't know if I can say that or not. Okay. Can uh, I? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I will say it. I don't okay. know, that for Life is Strange 2, definitely um, uh, we will get uh, your choice in Life is Strange 1 and it, it will affect um, some, some elements in Life is Strange 2. Okay. So there is, no, there is no canon ending for sure and mm -hmm. the players with either one or the endings will have some consequences for this ending in, yeah. in the next game. Okay, fair enough. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm assuming that will be like little, it'll be s small nods to the first game, right? It's because Life Strange 2 is its own thing, you know, it, uh, it isn't necessarily impacted um, by Life is Strange 1, but they like, like, you know, it's, yeah, it's, so not as all about nodding to, uh, to the previous <laughs> exactly. game. Exactly, and it's, right? like we said, it's still the same universe, so it has to be there, and yeah. some, some elements are, so it's really hard to say without spoiling course, anything, no, and, but you're uh, right, it's a, it, 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 I, I wouldn't, it won't be major, of course, <laughs> because we said that we are going with, uh, like, like you see with, with Chris, with new characters and new stories, but definitely what happened before is there and it has still some impact on the world. Now, what elements could it actually influence? Best case scenario, best case scenario is that Max would be back. Max is the person that is alive in both endings, so 
it, she can easily be there. Like if Arcadia Bay is around, we can easily meet her. I've been thinking, the developers are not saying anything about Life is Strange 2. At this point, I'm becoming a bit paranoid because I thought that we would never get to see Chloe or Max again. But now I'm thinking we can actually get to see Max again because they're not saying anything, which makes me think that you know, this is such a big surprise. They don't wanna, they don't wanna ruin it by, by telling us stuff. Now, this theory that I have, based on some comments, based on my own thoughts, is that Chris is related to either Chloe or Max. Now, he is a bit similar to Max if you look at the freckles. But I've been thinking, to me, he actually looks like Chloe. I mean, young Chloe. If you have a look at young Chloe, she's a bit similar to Chris. Also, Chris's father, he looks like William a bit, and William. Chloe's father, he had a brother and if he's Chloe's cousin then it is possible that Max will meet him or will have to take care of him or something. Maybe Max will be a big part of, part of Life is Strange too, although they did say that they're going with new characters, new set of characters, but I'm, I'm hoping that Max will appear there at some point. Maybe even Chloe if you pick the safe Chloe option. I know that's uh, daydreaming, I know that's Probably not possible, but this is what I'm hoping to see. A more probable option is that we'll get to see, for example, a newspaper with a headline uh, that Arcadia Bay was destroyed or not destroyed, or that we'll get to hear a conversation like someone will say something about Arcadia Bay being saved or about a tornado, anything like that. Now, that would be a nice Easter egg, it's just not really enough for me. Another reason why I think that Max can be a part of Life is Strange too is Chris's pose. The way he's holding his hand, sort of like, you know, like Max when she was rewinding time. Maybe there will be a link there. So they mentioned that there will be many links to Life is Strange 2 and Life is Strange 1. So fingers crossed that, that when the game's released, we'll actually find them. I'm very eager to find all these links and I'm very excited to look for them and I think the game will be released soon. This is what Michelle Cox actually said in an interview. I cannot, very tight lip. I cannot say anything <laughs> about Life is Strange 2, but you will hear about it in, in, the, couple, in, in, the, in the coming months, so it won't be that long. Yeah. So these are actually my hopes for that game. Uh, if the game is not too demanding because they're using a new engine, if my, my laptop will handle that, I will try to stream it the moment it's released. So we might get to actually look for these clues together if you want to. Uh, I'll, I'll keep you updated about that. So these are my thoughts about Captain Spirit. I know I've been a bit chaotic about them, but it just comes and goes and I see random comments. I see some people discussing it. There's so many things going on in my head. I might record another video if something else comes up. So remember to stay tuned, subscribe, like if you enjoyed that video. Check out the links in the description for social media and stay tuned. Now I'm interested to know what you're thinking about Captain Spirit and if you think that I'm right about the terminally ill mother or a relationship between Chris and possibly Chloe or possibly Max. Thanks for watching. This was Ola from Stop Me All channel. Bye guys.